Hey guys, what's going on? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here, and it's time to take a look at all the stuff I sold over the weekend. Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I'm a reseller in Montana. That means I go to garage sales and estate sales. I go to thrift stores. I buy stuff, and then I sell it again online. I make a profit. And a lot of people right now are having issues doing that. You know, you, you see it all over the place. People saying, you know, I, I'm just not selling stuff. eBay is just not working right now. You know, last weekend we had really good sales because I had a whole lot of those trail of painted ponies, the high dollar stuff moving. This weekend, no high dollar stuff moving. But we sold more than three dozen things. And so I think what made up for the high dollar amount for me this weekend was quantity. And it was a quantity of lower dollar sales. We're going to talk about that after we take a look at all the stuff that I sold. Definitely quantity heading out of the mountain after this weekend. Let's go through it. We've got the Mickey Mouse hat. This on our most recent video. And this actually picked up by a viewer of the channel. Janet came in. And uh, Janet, I apologize. I think she said she was giving this to her son. I can't remember. But Janet paid eight dollars fifty cents plus shipping for mickey i paid a dollar for him at a garage sale so a solid roi and a really cool hat headed out to janet janet thank you very much we've got quite a few hats actually going out this weekend i love selling these things the la dodgers hat this one also a recent garage sale pickup i think i paid two dollars for this one and it sold for twelve dollars plus shipping We've got more. How about University of North Carolina? This one's still new with the tags. I've had this one for a little while. Can't remember what I paid for it. I think I probably paid a dollar for it. And this one is headed out after this weekend for $13 plus shipping. How about Dale Earnhardt? Dale is always, well, I won't say always. Dale is often a good pickup. Snap-on often a good pickup. And so... Yeah, I picked them up when they were both on the same hat. This one from that big hat haul that we had here a couple weeks ago. And not a huge high dollar hat, but an old hat, a cool looking hat. $19.49 plus shipping. And then Blackhawk, ammunition brand here. This one, a lower dollar hat, but I think I paid a dollar for it and it sold for $9.98 plus shipping so hats you can see a really solid filler item for your store you can source them very cheap at garage sales even thrift stores we got stuff crashing down back here and you can turn around for a good profit leisure suit larry the big box game for the pc i remember me picking this up relatively recently it does not have the manual but otherwise is intact and a fantastic game to find this picked up watchers almost instantly and sold within a week this is actually going international one of six international orders that we had this weekend 42 dollars 24 cents plus shipping up to canada over here actually one that we did not sell on ebay i posted this one on instagram for those of you that don't follow me there the uh the information is in the description below how you can find me on instagram but this thing is super cool this i found this weekend and i paid up for it we bundled together you know i would think that i ultimately ended up paying in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 dollars for this mostly because of condition you know it's it's dinged up over here a little bit certainly rusted the bottom is rusting but Guys, this goes back to either 1910, 1911, right in there somewhere. This, you can see on the top here, it says Ford Model 111. This came off a Model T. This would have been a kerosene lamp. You can see that's where the wick goes right there. And there would have been originally a door here, a door here, and like right here, this had a glass, a colored glass window in it. I believe it was red, white, and blue, or red clear and blue and it is missing those two walls it's missing obviously the glass but such a cool piece it's more than a hundred years old 
put it on Instagram, and Adam collects kerosene lamps, lanterns, and was very interested in it, and so we swung a deal, and so $50 plus shipping for that guy, and it's headed to a viewer, and it's going to look incredible. I, I think I would not restore this. I would let this sit like this. It tells a story of the age there. It's beautiful. So, Adam, thank you so much, man. That that uh, That's really cool. I appreciate you reaching out, and uh, glad to get that to you. This, another viewer sale, another cool piece, a little bit of a steampunk look here. A old pressure gauge. This is a moto meter. You can see that down there. Keep an eye out for that. These do sell both for decor and for use. This would still work just fine. And this actually picked up by a good friend of the channel through uh, Dominic Primetime Treasure Hunter Facebook group, the Reselling Resource Center. There was an event going on there, and he highlighted my store for a little bit. And we had a couple of people come in and pick up a few things. And Cynthia picked up the Moto Meter Pressure Gauge for $19.49 plus shipping. So, Cynthia, thank you so much. The other one from that event, actually, right here. This going out to Pamela. We've got the Catwoman enamel pin. That's my name, Maximilians. Don't wear it out or I'll make you buy me a new one. I've got a handful of cool pins in the store. They do move. They take a while to move. It just takes the right person finding it. But they all look like this. I mean, it's high quality, really cool pop culture geek type stuff. And so really cool pin going out to Pamela. $9.98 plus shipping on that. Let's stick with the movie theme, I guess. Dick Tracy, this a cool watch. I picked this up last summer at a sale. Not a super high dollar watch, and I knew that picking it up. But, you know, I'm a sucker sometimes for this cool old movie, comic, that kind of stuff. It does need a new battery. Otherwise, it would have gone for higher. And I did end up eventually taking an offer on this because it had been sitting there for a year. So $19.00 plus shipping for the Dick Tracy watch. This actually going international, but shipping to a U.S. address. We sold one of these here recently. This is a drafting pencil. It's got lead inside. You push the button and, well, there you go. Get it to focus. The end opens up. And this one actually going to shop airlines. You will get a message from them after they buy. They've got multiple accounts and they're a fantastic customer. So definitely, if you get something from Shop Airlines, you know, a purchase from one of their accounts, not a scam. They're good folks. They generally buy things and then ship them overseas, a lot of times to Japan. And so $9.98 plus shipping. And then they do send that note saying, you know, hey, payment is on its way. And it usually comes in after the payment is actually made. And they ask that you put the item number on the outside of the box. That just helps them because these go into giant warehouses and that helps them sort it. It's not a problem. It's not a scam. Write it on the outside, or you can actually have it printed on the label. And that just helps you to help them. And they're a good customer, so you want to help them out. How about these guys? We sold one of them. Now we sold the other that we picked up. We're maybe 50 cents into this thing. We sold the other one on an offer for 16 or 17 bucks to Japan, actually. This one, staying here in the States, $19.49 plus shipping. So kind of a cool surprise little pickup there. I didn't realize it'd actually be worth quite that much. Yahtzee, this is an old Milton Bradley handheld game. Look at these handhelds when you go to garage sales, guys. Not a lot of them are high dollar, but a good number of them are actually worth buying if you can get them cheap. And generally people sell these things for cheap. Now there are some solitaire, there are some other games that actually sell pretty high dollar, especially if you can find them new. Sometimes you can find those things new and sealed, and you can sell those things for approaching $100. It, it's crazy. This one did not sell for that much, but I picked up this along with two other handhelds in a baggie for $1 total. So certainly worth picking up because this thing sold for $8.99 plus shipping. So certainly worth the time on that. Over here crashing down, unfortunately. Reign of Terrier. This is the Scottish Bakehouse Mysteries series. We sold a couple of these for a pretty high dollar. One of them was the last in the series, and one was, I think, near the end, a little bit more rare. And this one's been kind of just hanging out, even though I liked the play on words a lot. This Terrier was in 
I think all the all, he must be a main character. I I don't know, but this eventually did sell all profit four dollars ninety nine cents plus shipping on that one. We've got a vinyl back here. Actually, we sold two of them this week, and this is a cool one. Deep purples burn. Sorry, that's reflecting on there. And you can see it's definitely got some shelf wear, but it is still a very good album and desirable. I took an offer of eight dollars fifty cents plus shipping on that. Let me move some of these and we'll get to the rest. All right, now we got some room to move these things as we show them. Whoop, knocking them all down. We got the game from Queen. This one actually going internationally. This headed to France, 30 euros. So we're going to make some decent money off of that. We got a plush head now. Got an old Triceratops here. Reminds me. Welcome. To Jurassic Park. If you got Jurassic Park stuff, might be a good time to list it. People are going to start looking for it. That's coming out, uh, I think, the end of this week. This guy sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Good amount of video games heading out this weekend as well, and several of them going international. We had Larry heading up to Canada, and now we've got Pinball Hall of Fame. This for the PlayStation 2 Black Label. Watch out for those black labels on a lot of games they tend to make them worth a little bit more this is not a high dollar game and i actually took an offer on it i think i had it up at like five six dollars something like that because it's a low dollar but a good sell through so i did list it and i got an offer of four dollars plus shipping i took it and then turns out that shipping is sending this thing to spain so spain on the list today we've got another international this is ben 10 again black label PlayStation 2 Protector of Earth. Ben 10 does pretty well for me, both in figures and in games, I guess. I haven't sold a whole lot of games for Ben 10, but this one going to Brazil, $7.98 plus shipping. Got Virtua Tennis for the Xbox 360. Very low dollar game here, but again, it had a high sell through, so I listed it and it sold for $6.98. Free shipping. Here we got. Another black label, PlayStation 2, Dead to Rights 2, $14.29 plus shipping. Black label, PlayStation 2, Jack 2. This one sold for an offer that uh, they sent $6.50. I think I had it listed at like seven something. They sent six. I came back at seven. They took it. So $7 plus shipping for Jack 2. We got Star Wars Rebel Assault for the Sega CD. The case is damaged, or it would have gone for a little bit more. You see a big crack across there. It busted on the back corner there. It's not in great shape, but it is a good game. And so I sent out an offer on this one, $36 plus shipping. Not a nice little sale. We got a couple more here. We got a little pack of five. This is just games that didn't sell well on their own. So I put them all together, made a little bundle, and that's actually going international. This one sold actually this morning. It bled into Monday, I guess, a little bit on these, but five DS games heading up to Mexico. I guess that would make it down to Mexico, wouldn't it? $14.29 plus shipping, though USPS, who knows? They might go up and around. I don't know. Then we've got new Super Mario Brothers 2 for the Nintendo 3DS. This one selling for $13.27 plus shipping. Got some DVDs. These picked up actually just this weekend at a sale a block away from my house. NCIS, some of these seasons sell pretty well and for decent money. I've sold them before. This is the 18th season. This show has been on forever. It's had spinoffs. At one point, I don't know if it still is, it was the most watched show on network TV for some time. People love this show. And the later seasons, I think, are not streaming right now. So that's why some of these still sell for pretty good money. The 18th season, this one sold day of, or I, I think next day of listing, $9.98 plus shipping. Now, I did pay $5 for this, right? But only because I knew that the sell-through was there. I could sell it for 10 bucks. So after purchase price, after fees, you know, even after taxes, you know, we're still going to make 3 bucks four bucks something and i mean it took no time picture picture and then you open it up and you take a picture of the discs i mean it's three pictures and a self similar to make three or four bucks why not this one much better ncis the 16th season this one sold for 19.99 cents 
plus shipping. Very happy with that. We sold another Mary Kay. Those sales are starting to slow up. We still have some of them left. This is Moonstone. This is uh, eye cream powder. Stuff. I don't know what it is other than $7 plus shipping. Then we sold another thing to a viewer. This is Vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. These are accessories to Fugtoid. And these going out to Todd. He said, not an anime man, but I hope these help get things moving. And Todd, things are moving this weekend. Thank you so much, my friend. $12 plus shipping for the Fugtoid stuff. A couple of cassette tapes. We've got the Highwaymen. This is actually Highwaymen 2. These guys are awesome. And uh, so I, I picked it up mostly because I love them. We got Willie, Johnny Cash, Waylon, and old Chris Christofferson. $3.99 plus shipping for that one. And then this one that I picked up this weekend. Uh, I picked it up with a whole bunch of stuff. We paid $40. It was a church sale. And it was, how much do you want to give us? So, you know, I definitely paid up for some of the stuff there, even though we, we are going to make money on it for sure. I uh, wasn't sure the value on this one. This is the Beatles 1962 to 1966. And it, it's got pretty solid sell-through. And sure enough, it sold, I think, day of listing. And we sold that for $9.98 plus shipping. This guy, I accepted an offer early this morning. I'm trying to get it to where you can see. Well, whatever. <laughs> it's a mirror, so it's reflecting everything. There you go. You can kind of see. It's. I, I thought it was neat. You know, you got the boy fishing, the hat, the dog running along. It's just kind of a cool classic picture. And so it's the mirror thermometer. It's an advertising piece. Got plastic along the side here. It was just a neat piece. And so I took a shot at it. And I got an offer overnight that I accepted this morning. $21 plus shipping. Pretty cool. Another international sale here. This is, uh, of course, Hoka One One. And the bottom, a little bit chewed up, right? And I didn't really clean them up. You know, I just listed them as they were, to be quite honest with you. And, you know, it's not awful on the bottom. There's still certainly a good amount of tread, but it is worn. But these have such a good sell-through. Picked them up anyway for a couple bucks at Goodwill. And they sold overseas going over to Australia for 100 Australian dollars. I'd have to check what it is today. Usually it's 73, 75 cents in that neighborhood is the conversion rate. So those aren't going to be super expensive to ship over. So we'll definitely make good money off of those. We've got some toys heading out as well. This is an old Transformers toy, an old G1 Generation 1. This is from 1987. It's Ritter Snapper. And this one, I actually got an offer. I think I had this on up at $7.98 plus shipping. You know, not real high dollar. And uh, I got an offer on it of, I don't remember. It was like 5 And I countered back at 7 That's really where I wanted to go. I think mine is the only one out there. Or it was, anyway. He countered back at... It, it was still very low. At like 6, I came back at 7. He came back at 6.50. I came back at 7. He declined. Then he came back later in the day. At 6. And it was sort of a... Well, I'm the only one interested. So now, my offer went down. So I offered 7 again. And guess what? He took it. So he was very determined to get a good deal. But... I stuck to the price that I wanted to stay at, and ultimately he went, fine, you have the only one, I'll take it. I don't know why people are so obnoxious, sometimes over 50 cents, but I, I guess they could say the same thing about me. We've got this guy. This is old school G.I. Joe. This is a Toxo Viper, and he would have sold for more, but his legs are, you can see, very, very loose. And so I did price him down a little bit just to try to move him out. And he did still sell from 1988, selling for $7.99 plus shipping. And then we got another little here. This is from Hardee's, back when Hardee's had toys. It's Hanna-Barbera. This is Dick Dastardly, along with his dog. And, uh, you know, I've said it before on the channel, you never know what's going to go international and this one is going to France. They paid twenty three ten in euros. This is going to go over at like four ounces, so it's not going to cost me a whole lot to send over. We're definitely going to make some money on old Dick Dastardly. So that a cool little sale. Got a knife as well. This is a vintage 
knife you can see right there stewart's stewart's butcher knife 2274 plus shipping and then this guy you know this guy was giving us a hassle the guy that bought this one this one is funny and uh well i'll tell you the story here just in a second once we sit down and finish this thing up but i will tell you that it ultimately did sell and it's a nice sale we got 51.99 for halloween this is a rare copy of this vhs tape this media watch out for that the media home entertainment there are of course just like anything else lots of versions just like you know vinyl You'll see versions, cassette, you know, music, you'll see versions. We talked about the games, you know, the black label back there. That's the first version of that game on PlayStation 2. This one as well, you know, this, this is a rare copy. And the cheapest that has sold in the last little bit, last at least when I listed these, was at $50. And it had somebody's name written across it, right? So it was in rough condition, but there's nobody's name written on there. And so I priced it right about that $50 mark. And we did eventually get that sale. So lots of stuff there, right? I mean, not a lot of it was high dollar. We did have six international sales, which when people say, how can I ramp up my sales? That's one of the things I offer. As I say, you need to sell internationally. I think five countries, six different sales. And I mean, asterisks next to shop airlines that thing's heading to japan so it was a it was a sale here in the u.s i think it's going to california but ultimately it is going overseas so like let's call it six and a half international sales 37 items all told and how many of those were high dollar none of them 26 of them in fact were under $15. 26 out of 37 were under $15. Now, I know some people say, you know what, I don't want to sell stuff for that amount. Okay, if I didn't sell stuff for that amount, I would have had 11 sales for the weekend of $15 or more. Pick which side you want to be on. You know, I'm definitely working more because I'm packing more of those things up, but they're so easy. I mean, it doesn't take but a minute start to end on many of them, less than that sometimes. So th there's more time spent, but it's still not a lot of time. It, it, it's insignificant. And that's my job, right? Like ultimately, this is my job. I can't complain that I've got to work to make money. Reselling is work, guys. It's not a vacation. You're still making money by working. It's just you're working for yourself and it's a whole lot more fun. Now, let's dig into that Halloween thing. Now, I bought that Halloween tape actually in a lot of VHS tapes off of whatnot. I think I got it for like $12 or something for three or four movies. I've already sold the others. I was pretty much even. And that was the reason though that I that I made that purchase. I wanted that particular VHS tape. And it's because I knew what it was. It's a rare copy of that tape. Now, when you price something high, a lot of people like you're going to get low offers. You know, you're going to get people that aren't necessarily collectors. They're just like, oh, that's cool. And you're going to get low offers. I got low offers on Halloween. It's been listed for a while. I actually, I remembered and I went back and I found the messages because I never erase messages. I'm just lazy about that. I found the message in the system so that I can show you. I got an offer on this uh, some time ago for $10. Note that I had listed it 50 plus. $10. So, of course, I straight declined. You know, I don't believe you have to counter every offer you get, especially if it's obnoxious. Just hit the decline button. If they're interested, they'll come back again. And this person was, I guess, interested because they came back at $11 and they attached a message to it. Check this out. They said, you know, hey, th this is only worth $50 for somebody that really wants it and is willing to pay that amount for it. I mean, I guess that's what they said, right? Uh, weird. I know, that's who I'm selling it to, dude. Um, so I think my offer is more than fair. It's not. So I countered, I don't remember what I countered at that point. It wouldn't have been any less than about 45. And I don't think I started sending that out until it had been listed for a while. It was probably about 50 bucks, you know, 49, something like that. Then they came back, as I recall, at something like 11.50, right? Being obnoxious, like, okay, I'll, I'll up my offer, you know, 
they're not really up at that point. No, we don't want anything to do with them. Right. So straight decline. Uh, then later on, look at this. I got another one. At least they made a real offer at it, but they said, it's my birthday. I, I didn't know what to say to that. So I do think that I countered, never heard back. I am somebody that very often says you should accept and send offers, right? I, I think that's a great way to make sales on eBay. That said, don't accept every offer that comes in. There are a lot of people that are obnoxious. There are a lot of people that are cheap. There are a lot of resellers out there trying to buy something cheap and then resell it for a profit. And they're going to send you low offers, right? Low offers are going to come in. Don't take it personally. You know, I, I, I don't take personal offense to it. Even if it is obnoxiously low, I just hit decline and move on with my day. And eventually, you know, unless you have it priced incorrectly, and sometimes that happens, you just overestimated the market. And if you get a whole bunch of offers right at the same price point, you might start realizing, you know what, maybe I priced myself out of the market here. I need to take a look and change it. But more often than not, if you've done the research, if if you know what the value is, if you know what you want out of it, stick to your guns. You know, be willing to budge a little bit, especially if things are slow. You know, there has to be, there's no hard and fast rule here. You can operate in a little bit of an offer gray area, but don't let somebody bully you into thinking, well, maybe I am wrong on my price, especially if it's one single person and they're sending stupid offers. Stupid is stupid does, Mrs. Blue. I guess. Block them, deny them, move on with your day, and eventually, like we had on this, somebody's going to pick that up. You're, you're going to find the buyer eventually. So, guys... I appreciate you. I got to let you go because I do have to get a lot of this stuff packed up. I got to get this all out today and I got to get it done because the abs are going to close out the conference finals tonight and get ready to make a run at the Stanley Cup. I got to be there for it. Well, not there. I'm going to be here, but I'm going to watch it. <laughs>